Hi, this is Devin from Apprenda again. And in this episode, we're going to talk about multi-tenancy and what it means to you. One of the core concepts in cloud computing is that of multi-tenancy. And as you look at bringing cloud capabilities into your organization, it's important to understand the full range of tenancy options available to you and what those will mean to your business. To begin with, virtualization creates a tenancy model at the most basic infrastructure level and this is the ability to carve a single physical server into multiple virtual machines. So if we look at a single, in this case, large physical server, we have the host OS, we have our hypervisor layer, and that allows us to carve this resource up into any number of virtual machines of varying sizes. So we have our guest OS, one, two, and three. And these will usually be used to host components from one application per. So this is hosting a full app or components of application one. This machine might be dedicated to application two, and this one might also be dedicated to application two, meaning these two machines now form their own silo. What we're looking at here, again, this is the virtualization paradigm, but this is also what's under the hood of infrastructure as a service. It's just that infrastructure as a service, or often called private cloud, And these constructs are the same in public, but as usual, we're talking about the context of private. In infrastructure service of private cloud, self-service has been deployed around this, and some additional bells and whistles to make it a little more friendly to the development community, a little easier to action against. But the tenancy model is exactly the same. This is helpful, but it's really a pretty coarse-grained way of isolating your applications and components, since each one of these is now wrapped in its own hypervisor and OS, and it's fundamentally an IT-centric way of solving the problem. This is really solving provisioning and management challenges. Moving up the paradigm, we have platform as a service, and PASS will take the tenancy concept one, one step further. So with platform as a service, let's use an example of four OS instances. These could be physical or virtual, so we don't know if they're guest or host OSs. And instead of dedicating them to a single application and using that coarse grain methodology, the application components are actually cohabited within the OS instances. So each one of these OSs might be hosting components from one or more applications. The routing, load balancing distribution of this is all handled by the platform. And the platform is what actually creates the isolation around these different processes so that they don't conflict with one another and so that they only consume the amount of resources that are allowed and governed by the platform. This is a much more fine-grained way of hosting and cohabiting your application components rather than dedicating individual OS instances for them. This is a much more developer-centric model because what it's doing is abstracting the applications away from the infrastructure so the devs don't really have to focus or worry about the IT aspect of this. And ops, on the other hand, can now focus on man managing a single large resource pool, because this is their responsibility, right? These base OSs. And can look at the application portfolio as a whole, rather than dealing with, here's one silo, here's another one that we have to deal with. The third layer of tenancy and this is the, the final layer we'll talk about today, is within the application itself. And this is the tenancy model 
that is really popularized by software as a service leaders like Salesforce.com, NetSuite, folks like that. And it's really the ability to run a single instance of application that serves the needs of multiple distinct end user groups. Each one of them being isolated from the other in terms of performance and their data needs. So if we look at a single application, app one, it might be serving the needs of tenant one, tenant two, Tenant three, each of which might have multiple end users. So here you have three different tenant groups or organizations, each of which with multiple end users, all accessing one instance of the application running, one instance of the code base, but getting a completely different experience potentially, getting completely different data, which is being isolated by the platform or uh, application intellectual property underneath it. It means you don't have to stand up multiple instances of those instances of that application. Typically what we've seen in the past is you'd have app one prime, app one double prime, and app one triple prime, and then you'd have tenant one, tenant two. And these wouldn't really be tenants, these are more just group one, two, and three at that point. And you stood the application up three times, you now have to manage it three times, you have to monitor it three times, you have to update it three times. This is the old model that we called ASP, or Application Service Provider from the 90s. About $2 billion in venture capital went into this model. Very little came out because it, it, it's very inefficient. It's very difficult to run a business that way when you're standing up unique instances of an application time and time again for, say, for different customers. Sharing it at this level, Using the software as a service paradigm is far more efficient, both in an internal context and as a software business itself. So this is an overview of the different tenancy models uh, in cloud computing. Again, it's important to understand the differences between infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, and the different tenancy models they provide. To remind you, infrastructure as a service, this is IT-centric. This is very dev-centric. And the SaaS level of tenancy is, is developer-centric, it's IT-centric in some ways. It's also, this is a very data-centric concept. Reason being, the data for all these different tenants is being stored in a common DB. But it's being served to the tenants very differently. That DB is being carved up to serve these different needs, yet everything's commingled. So you do have an aggregate data store here, which for an internal organizational use case can be very, very handy. Think about business units all running the same expense reporting application. Each business unit can only see its own data, but from a corporate macro perspective, all the data is already in the same DB. Very easy to do roll-ups and uh, reporting across that. So a very data-centric, uh, intelligent model. That's an overview of the different tenancy models within cloud computing. There's some variations within this, but it's important to understand uh, which ones are right for you and what they bring to the table.